Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do in this video is just kind of go through examples of finding an initial value. And I'm only doing two examples because usually, typically in compound interest, we're most concerned about finding the final value. However, we also could want to say, well, what would be the initial value? You know, if I, if I wanted to, you know, earn $100,000 in 30 years and I was going to earn, you know, get earn a rate of 7%, how much do I need to initially invest, right? So initial value can become important, but there's really not too much difference than finding the final value um, in the formula. We're just plugging things in and then evaluating. So I'm only going to do two examples of this because um, you'll see it's very similar to the previous video I did for finding final value. So in this case, now we're given final value. So I'm going to fill that in for final value. You can see my formula is right up there. Final value is 100,000. Now my present value, I do not know. So I'm going to write it though as P instead of using PV. I'm just going to use P because I didn't want students to confuse PV with P or confuse PV as two different variables. It's just one variable which represents the initial value. And then I'm going to multiply that by 1 plus my interest rate. And remember to put your interest rate in decimal form. So that's going to be 0 0.07 divided by the number of terms I compounded. Now, I didn't tell you how, tell you how many times I compounded because typically we've gotta, we want to make sure we remember you know, monthly, annually, uh, uh, weekly, and what was the one? Daily, so forth. Well, biweekly is going to be every other week. So if there's 52 weeks in the year, every other week is going to give us 26. And then that's going to be 26 times 30. OK, uh, let me turn down the AC because it gets really hot in here, especially during the summer. So it's just me and you talking. Um, all right, so I need to figure out what P. So basically, the main important thing what I want to do is, again, we want to make sure that we do not, um, we do not approximate using our calculator. Uh, we want to use the full values when we're using our calculator. So the main important thing that we want to do here first is I want to figure out what this value is, and then I'm going to divide p by that value. So um, I'm going to simplify this, and again, using my order of operations, I'm going to simplify what's inside the parentheses first, because parentheses, PEMDAS, parentheses, you do first. Inside the parentheses, I have to use do division before I do addition. So I'm going to do 0 0.07 divided by 26, and that gives me this huge decimal. My calculator only rounds to the ninth digit, which should be pretty good for accuracy, because since we're dealing with money, I'm only going to round to the nearest tenth. Um, but you could always adjust that on your calculator. You want to make sure it's going to, um, again, I'm writing it down for, for uh, educational purposes, but just always keep the answer in the calculator. And you're going to keep on using the same answer, using the answer key, or the second answer key, as we call it. Um, and then I'm going to add one to that decimal, and I get 1.00269230. And I'm going to raise that to the 26 times 30. Now, you could do that separately, but since I want to keep this answer in there, I'm just going to use the caret, and that's going to take that answer, raise it to the power, and I'm just going to type in 26 times 30. Okay. And when I do 26 times 30, I now have 100,000 equals P times 8.143158612. Okay? Um, so now, basically, to solve for P, I just got to divide on both sides, right? To save a little time, I'm not going to write the whole number out. So my present value is going to equal, so what I'll do in my calculator is I'm going to take 100,000 100, and divide it by my answer. So I'm just going to type in second answer, which is going to take my previous answer, which was 8.14. And then that's going to give me uh, 1, 2, 2, 8, 0, rounded to the nearest tenth, 1.25. And again, that's in money. So therefore. If I want to earn $100,000 at the end of 30 years, and it's going to be compounded biweekly at an interest rate of $7,000, that means I need to invest $12,000 right, or $12,000, $280.25 right now. All right, the next one is going to be doing the final value um, where we have continuous interest. Remember, continuous interest, we use a little bit different formula. It's PV times E to the R times T, or sometimes also just given as Final value equals P times E to the RT. Same exact thing, just using P instead of PV. 
Um, all right, so let's go ahead and plug everything in. So we have 30,000 equals P, which is my present value, which I don't know. E is a irrational number. It's a constant um, raised to the R, again, in decimal form, times, that's not percent, that's 15 years, times 15. Okay, so basically what I can do here is I can use my E function where it says E raised to the X. So I'm just gonna do second LN, which will give me E raised to a power, and I'll just do 0 0.075 times 15. And that gives me a value of 3.080216849. Again, this is my calculator only approximating to the ninth digit, but the rest of all those numbers are inside the calculator. It's only displaying nine digits. So then I'm gonna take 30,000 and divide it by that answer, and what I obtain is 9,739.57. So therefore, so let's divide by 3.08 dot dot. That's basically what I'm doing to isolate the P. So P equals $9,739.57. So basically, if I want to earn $30,000 at the end of 15 years, compounded continuously at a rate of 7.5, I need to invest $9,739.57. Thanks.